So here is a tweet from June 2018. As we peruse all of the political, rhetorical, philosophical, and other debates across the world, two things I try to keep in mind. For every point, there is a counterpoint. If a point is being made very loudly or broadly, that's broadly, <laughs> like Broad City, TV show, there's more incentive for one to make a loud counterpoint. So if a point is being made loudly and broadly, there's more incentive for the other side to make a loud counterpoint. Of course, every action does have an equal and opposite reaction. I know that's more of a physics thing, but it really kind of applies in the world of rhetoric and linguistics and current events as well. Um, when one thing pops up on this side that's very loudly stated and it's maybe controversial, yes, something will come up on this side here to meet it, to match it, to, you know, to respond to the, the big thing over here. There's a big thing over there. So as we peruse all the political, rhetorical, philosophical, and other debates across the world, two things I try to keep in mind. For every point, there is a counterpoint. And if a point is being made loudly and broadly, there's more incentive for one to make a loud counterpoint. So once again, every action, equal opposite, reaction. And yeah, you know, you'll see things pop up in this world, you know, when you see a movement, for example. We've seen it all over the political spectrum, the political globe, the political sphere, the political compass. In fact, we're seeing the center get smaller because when things get really big on the right, they get big on the left. And if they get big on the left, they get big on the right. They meet each other. There's a need presented where, you know, they'll say something that is new or it's novel or it's a movement. It's something in a different direction. Uh, we've seen this several times since the start of the information age, many, many times, where, you know, something will be stated, it'll be something new and novel, and then there'll be a counterforce that says, well, no, 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 we can't move, we can't progress in that direction. If you can think of any good situations where a movement started, and then people rose up to have a counter movement, please leave me a comment below with more information on that. Um, but yeah, for every point there is a counterpoint. So this is also about keeping an open mind when it comes to dialogue. So, you know, you might have a good point, I might have a good point, we might have a good point, but is it the only point? Is there no counter-argument to the argument we're making? No. There is always another argument. Now, it might not be a good argument. You might, or I might, or whoever it is, we might already have the best argument. But there's another side to every story. There are two perspectives for every event. Yours, or one person observing, and then another person observing. As Scott Adams says, two movies on one screen. So that, that's kind of what I was saying here. The counterpoint, the point, and the louder the point, the louder the counterpoint. Pretty much that's the way it seems to work uh, in human communication. It doesn't seem that, you know, we have, I do have a video about bridging the ideo ideological divide, bridging the ideological divide, check that out on BitChute, um, in which I talk about how, you know, with the rise of the radical left, you also have the rise of things like what they consider to be the, you know, the far right, the alt right. Of course, these terms, radical left, alt right, they're, you know, nebulous terms. They don't really have a defined meaning, a very set meaning. They can be used and by <laughs> sophists. They can be used by sophists to uh, create the narrative that they wish you to believe in about a given topic. Now, there are radical leftists and radical right-wingers, and I'm not trying to deny that fact, okay? I mean, it's obviously true that there are people that are, you know, further along in ideological uh, direction. You know, they're a little bit further down the road. They might have a few more views that make them stand out from the pack. They're not centrists by any means. They're not moderates. They're actually radicals. 
And of course, they're met on the other side, whichever side it might be, or if, you know, if you're getting outside of the false dichotomy of left and right, you can have certainly a lot of people popping up across all these different ideologies that just counter and say, like, look, if things are getting, if you're, if you're going to have your system, your new system, and you're pushing hard for it, you're getting judges in, and you're getting legislation passed, and you have this cultural movement, well, if we don't necessarily, on our side here, if we don't necessarily agree with, with what's going on, we, we're going to be loud as well, because if we're not loud, the changes that we are, you know, if they're, <laughs> I guess you could call them, it's not like it's traditionalist versus uh, progressive, you know, uh, new futurist or anything like that, but it's more like, you know, sometimes the futurists <laughs> feel differently than the others or whoever it might be. You know, not putting people into groups isn't what I intend to do here on this channel. Uh, you know, I said in my last video that there are two schools of thought, of course, that some people think more independently, and some people think more as a collective, like collectivists. And, you know, that's a little bit hyperbolic, I suppose. I mean, I think that there is a tendency for some people to fall into groupthink more than others. There are other people that go their own way and throughout their life for any reason. Um, but, you know, if you get into this group mindset, if you get into the groupthink, the uh, right-think and the wrong-think world, well... Yeah, it can definitely create an echo chamber, and in that echo chamber, that message gets amplified. The message gets amplified, and when your message from this echo chamber gets amplified and then transmitted, communicated to the greater internet, the greater human conversation, the other side, whatever side you're opposing, the counter to your argument, they get louder as well. If they don't, they disappear, they drown under the sea of white noise, okay? So you're going to see any time that there's any kind of extreme, any side of anything, both sides, whatever it might be, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. There's going to be a strong counterpoint to your point. And perhaps both points are valid. I mean, there's only so many arguments where we have settled science, where we have people that no longer need to think. <laughs> They don't have to think anymore because that their point is correct. There is no counterpoint. There is no valid, rational counterpoint. You know, all the evidence is on one side. Those cases are exceedingly uh, seldom seldom seen. Uh, there's more and more, you know, especially in this internet age where there's new new discoveries, new technologies, and new modes of thinking that have presented themselves and become popular through the dissemination. Uh, through the social media, through the World Wide Web. Look, I started with CompuServe and AOL. Give me a break. <laughs> so, yeah. If a point is being made very loudly and very broadly, well, there's more incentive for one to make a loud counterpoint. <laughs>